It's no secret that blockchain technology is a massive game changer for the finance industry, gaming, NFTs, and a whole lot more. But this tech actually has the power to disrupt pretty much every industry on the face of the planet. And in this video, I want to talk about a very powerful aspect of blockchain technology that people really aren't talking about that much. And one of the main reasons is you have to actually understand how the technology works to see what's truly possible with it. And that's what I want to talk about in this video so that you can understand and gain a competitive edge in this space. I'm going to talk about that as a blockchain developer who myself who works the technology on a daily basis. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step, start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So in case you missed the news recently, Twitter just announced that it's rolling out support for two crypto related features on its platform. One is the ability to tip other users with cryptocurrencies, and the other is to be able to use an NFT as your profile picture and actually use it in a verified way to prove that you actually own it. And this second feature, in my opinion, is actually a bigger deal uh, than the first feature because it's paving the way for what's possible with a very particular aspect of blockchain technology. And if you just think that, you know, who cares about profile pictures? I don't care about you know, collecting NFTs, it's actually important that you understand the technology behind what's happening here and how it has much broader implications outside of just profile pictures. So I'll explain that. So let's start off with the profile picture verification and talk about, you know, what it is first, okay, and why it's such a big deal. So first of all, you know, Twitter is talking about letting people take NFTs, use them as their profile picture, and then verify that they own this with blockchain. So let's see how that works, why it's important. So let's take let's take you know Snoop Dogg for as an example here. So you know Snoop Dogg's been a pretty big crypto advocate over the past year in particular. Um, he has a CryptoPunk uh, NFT avatar, right? And he also has this blue check mark right here. So this blue check mark is super important because this means that Twitter's done their due diligence to verify that Snoop Dogg is who he says he is, at least the person who owns this account is actually Snoop Dogg. And so when you're viewing these tweets, there's authenticity to it. You know, you you can you can you know that you know Snoop Dogg is authorizing this message in some way, whether he's actually tweeting it or not. But this relies upon a centralized middleman to actually do the verification process. You know, when you're with Twitter, you have to do things like produce a bunch of ID documents to verify that you are who you say you are. And um what, what what we're introducing a new possibility here is with these NFTs. So the NFT avatar is essentially replacing the blue check mark um, in this case, basically saying that I hold this crypto punk and that's what you know verifies me on this social network. And you might say, hey, the only thing that does is like prove that you bought an NFT and then now that you have it and you're, you know, rich, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are who you say you are. I'll talk about the broader implications of that here in a second. But, you know, proving that you actually own an NFT can be important when you're collaborating with others online who you don't know. Let's say you are in circles where NFT ownership is actually really important because it proves that you have clout. And let's say you can prove that you purchased this NFT on a certain date before it got popular, then that might actually be a reason why someone might want to listen to you other than just being like a, a a flex status symbol. There are real reasons why specific NFTs and the ownership of those NFTs, proven ownership, can be important. Now, let's talk about the actual uh, technology about how Twitter's integrating this. Well, like, like I said, I don't have an inside track at Twitter to understand exactly how they're implementing the system, but I understand what's possible with blockchain and I have a pretty good idea of, of the approach they're going to take to make this feature work. So it's, it has to do with message verification and digital signatures on blockchain. Okay. So people are already doing this to some degree in the NFT circles, uh, in the crypto circles. So basically, like if you look at some of the M NFT influencer uh, profiles on Twitter, you'll see this Etherscan link here. It says etherscan.io verify sig, and then it puts in a number, right? So what this does is it actually shows an Ethereum address, all right? And then it shows a message signature hash. And then it shows a message here that says, I am 0x Tycoon on Twitter. And so basically that lets someone say that, hey, I am this person on Twitter. I control this wallet address. And this wallet address, you could go verify yourself. It actually owns this particular CryptoPunk that I have in my profile picture. And so that prevents me from just like right-click saving an NFT and using it as my profile picture. And you can actually use the blockchain to prove this information. So how does it work? Because like I said, I don't know exactly how Twitter plans on implementing their NFT verification service, but I have a feeling it's going to use the exact same technology that's powering this same bootstrap feature that people are already doing uh, before Twitter has officially integrated the feature in their platform. Well, it all has to do with uh, digital signers, signatures and message verification. So I want to explain how that works on Ethereum because this is a really important technology that has broader implications that you could do more with other than just like you know, prove that you own an NFT for your profile picture. The 
thing you have to understand is how public key cryptography works, okay? So public key cryptography um, is basically what powers like Ethereum's account model. So in Ethereum, you have, uh, when, when, you, when you have a, you know, a wallet or a wallet address, right? You see that address string. Well, you have a public key and a private key. And all you need is the private key to generate the public key. And that address that you seeing that you see whenever you send it to somebody else, whenever you're receiving a cryptocurrency transaction is a representation of your public key. So the public key or the address is like your username. The private key is like your password. You never want to, you know, reveal your password to anybody else. But the private key is what essentially allows you to uh, identify that you are you, you're the person that can control this account and it lets you sign things. So anytime you send cryptocurrency with your MetaMask wallet, for example, you're signing that transaction with your private key. And similarly, you can just sign arbitrary messages that prove that you signed the message. And that's how these digital signature verification is going on right now. So l let me show how this works. So basically you have uh, you know, your public key, like I was saying, this kind, of like, kind of like your username and you have your private key, which is kind of like your password. So what you can do is basically, you know, take the private key and sign a message, okay? And whenever you sign the message and you have a signature, uh, both of these pieces of information together, you can use to actually deduce the public key of the person who signed it, okay? So basically, you have a private key, you sign a message, and you have the signature, and you j have this piece of information, and if you can c combine those together, then you can know the person who signed this message in the first place and actually guarantee the authenticity. And so you see that here, like on Etherscan, the message signature verification process, basically, you know, you have your Ethereum address, and then you could use an app like MyCrypto, for example, or maybe even Web3.js or something like that, Ether.js for your developer, and then create a message like this that just says, hey, I am this person on Twitter. And then you generate uh, the message signature hash, and then you put that in here, and that will actually, Etherscan can verify and give you a public link to say, yes, you know, this, this person controls this account, and I authorize this message. And so these digital signatures are, you know, a core of what makes this possible. This has Pretty big implications beyond just profile pictures on, you know, Twitter. Okay, so one really important implication is just general identity based on the blockchain. So as we come up with standards to essentially, um, you know, create and manage IDs on the blockchain to verify that you are who you say you are. So basically taking your account address and making it on steroids to be a much more ro robust identity solution. Then you could do things like digitally sign contracts, for example. So think about, you know, DocuSign has gotten really popular over the past several years. Well, at the end of the day, like with DocuSign, you're just creating an account and you're putting in this little like kind of phony looking signature on the, on the thing. I mean, digital, digital signature is way better than that, right? Because then it proves that you have control uh, over this particular private key uh, that would potentially control this identity and you could sign documents that way. We could get into much more advanced solutions like zero knowledge proofs. Um, you know, there could be systems down the road where essentially you know, this could replace uh, government issued IDs where essentially, you know, let's say that you had a government agency that could set this ID up for you, for example. I'm just gonna kinda improvise this example and show you what's potentially possible. So let's say you had an ID issuer who could come in and set up some sort of uh, identity-based system that's that's private key based on your own personal device, okay? And then maybe that device has some sort of biometric authentication that only you can operate to sign transactions and maybe you even need some sort of multi-factor authentication and the private key always stays on your device. Maybe it's a hardware wallet or whatever, but essentially you have some sort of, you know, ID issuer that comes in and that looks at all your ID information, takes in your, you know, name, date of birth, you know, whatever your unique identifier is in your country when you ask like social security number and just verifies the information is correct doesn't necessarily collect this data but then create some sort of digital record that's stored only on your device that only you have knowledge of that can never leave the device and now you have this digital identity and then you can sign anything uh based upon the identity and you could even do this where all the data is not public and on chain you could do it with zero knowledge proofs where like you want to do something where you know an application needs to know information about you but not knowing who you are this is an example of how zero knowledge proofs work let's say you want to go uh visit you know a website that sells wine and spirits or something like that and they want to prove that you're over 18 21 whatever the drinking age in your country is and they don't necessarily want to know who you are but they want to know information about you that you're over this age and they don't even want to know what your age is well you could provide that information you could just prove it to them without providing the knowledge that's what a zero knowledge proof is and all this can be back tied back to this identity management solution that can live only on your device that's set up by some sort of trusted third-party issuer and this could all integrate back into that digital signature solution that i've been explaining in this video you know you can sign documents with it and and of course, this would take some time, but you could actually have this 
come into play where it's recognized as a legal signature besides just like a wet ink signature. And in my opinion, this is a much better solution long term that can automate the process, be more secure, more robust. And this really has the potential to unlock, you know, new possibilities in pretty much every industry because it's way bigger than just, you know, profile picture verification on Twitter. But that's a really good start. And I'm excited for Twitter to integrate this because it's a big leap forward with the space. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you have any cool ideas on what you could build with something like this? So as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you went to the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.